Hi everyone, so in the previous video I talked about the idea that covalent bonds are not always, uh, the electrons are not always equally shared in that bond, that some um, atoms actually tend to attract the electrons more toward itself than the other atom that's bonded to it, and this is what we call electronegativity, and the result of it is that we have some bonds, covalent bonds, that are what we call nonpolar, because the electrons are you know, approximately equally shared, whereas some covalent bonds are what we call polar because their electrons are not equally shared. And remember I talked about this trend in electronegativity, which is increasing this way, and we can calculate something called the difference in electronegativity, which is symbolized by delta En here, which is just the difference in the values of electronegativity between the two atoms that are involved in that bond. And if it's a certain value, then you're going to call that bond polar, versus when it's not, we're going to call it nonpolar. Okay, so let's look at a particular uh, bond, covalent bond in this case, which is HF. Okay, so HF. Um, in this particular case, H has an electronegativity of 2.1, F has an electronegativity value of 4 in that table that I just showed you. Um, so if we take a difference between these two, this is going to be a difference of 1.9. And in that little um, range of values of electronegativity differences, we can see that 1.9 is pretty close to 2, which is very polar. So this is uh, what we would consider a very polar covalent bond. Now, how do we represent this? Um, the way we represent the polarity in the bond is by some, uh, it's by what we call a vector notation. So this is represented as an arrow, uh, where the arrow head goes towards the atom that is more electronegative. So in this case, F is more electronegative than H. So the arrow goes that way. And then at the start of the arrow, we put a little plus sign to indicate that that's the more uh, electropositive or the less electronegative side. Another way to represent this is by this delta positive, delta negative symbol. So the side that's more electronegative is given the delta negative symbol, vice versa, the side that's less electronegative given the delta positive symbol. But this bond um, vector symbol, also called a bond dipole, because there are two poles, there's the positive pole and negative pole, is the common way we represent um, polar bonds in. Um, uh, a molecule okay so you can also do some calculation to show that one side is more more negative than the other side and this is shown right here at the bottom usually the way these things are colored is the blue represents the side that's more positive and then the red represents the side that's more negative so if we were to calculate you know, uh, charge distribution in an HF molecule, we'll see that the H side is very blue, whereas the F side is very red, indicating these uh, charge distribution. Okay, now what's important for us is actually uh, something called molecular polarity. Now if you look at um, a molecule like HF, there's only one bond in HF, which is that HF bond. And because the HF bond is polar, the entire molecule of HF is also polar because there's only one bond in it. Well, but what happens with molecule with many bonds? A lot of molecules have more than one bond, right? So how do we determine molecular polarity that way? Well, if we have more than one bond, then each of the bond vector will be represented by that arrow symbolism that I just showed you. And each of that arrow, right, has basically a magnitude or the size of the uh, vector which basically is just pretty much proportional to that delta En component, the difference in electronegativity um, and usually is represented by the length of the arrow okay it's the magnitude component but you can see also that there's their directionality right this is for example going this way some you know if you have multiple bonds you can imagine one might be going this way another one might be going that way another one might be going this way and so on I'll show you uh, a, a brief example in a second okay so each bond vector then has a magnitude which is proportional to delta En but it also has a direction now when you want to know whether the molecule is polar or not, what you have to do is you have to add, you have to sum all of these bond vectors, okay, together. Uh, and the sum of the bond vectors tell you what the value of the overall uh, uh, 
polarity of the entire molecule. And the sum is what we call the dipole moment. I'll summarize this in the in the next slide. But the sum is what we call the dipole moment of that molecule. Okay. Now, how do you add vectors? This is not something you need to know in this class, but it's useful to see it so that you can understand why um, we say some molecules are polar and some molecules are nonpolar. Okay. When you try to add a vector, basically you have to do it this way. Let's say you have uh, this vector here A. Let's say you have a, a somehow a molecule. Here's your central atom located at this position. And then you have a terminal atom that's located here. And there is uh, this atom is more electronegative than that one. So there's a bond vector going this way. And then there's the, another bond is uh, another atom is located here. And because there's a bigger difference in electronegativity, that uh, bond is illustrated as a longer bond vector. Okay, so again, this uh, atom is more electronegative than the central atom. So as a result, you have these two vectors, and what you have to do is add these two numbers, these two vectors together, to get you an overall vector. Okay, so how do you add them? Well, the way you do it in, in vector math, which you'll learn either in math or you'll learn in physics, is basically what you do is you take one of these vectors and you try to put them at the uh, uh, n of the first vector. So so you can take b and kind of take it and move it over here so that the start of b uh, it, it starts exactly where a ends. Okay, so then it becomes this and that. And then the summation, the vector that's a result of adding these two is basically the one that's illustrated by this little dashed line right here. Now the other po way you can add the vectors is obviously you can have B and then you move A all the way up here so that the start of A is exactly where B ends. But you can see that that gives you exactly the same um, resulting vector. So this dashed line here, this dashed line vector is what we call the resulting vector which is the result of adding vector A plus vector B. Okay, enough about vector addition. Let's talk about molecular polarity. Okay. You uh, so here at the top, I'm showing you several molecules here: H2O, CF4, uh, CHF3, and so on. As you can see, for something like H2O, the oxygen atom is more electronegative than the hydrogen atom. So the vector goes this way. Okay, the bond vector goes this way. So when you add these two vectors together using the rules that you just learned for vector addition, you get an overall dipole for the molecule. That's called a dipole moment. Okay, That's called a dipole moment. It has a symbol. The symbol is mu. Okay, And it should have a little arrow at the top because it's a vector quantity. Now, how do we determine molecular polarity? Whenever that mu vector is zero, then the molecule is nonpolar. When the molecule when you add all of the vectors together and you get a mu that's bigger than zero, then we consider the molecule to be polar. Okay. Now, in this case, when you do add the vectors in water, okay, this vector and that vector, you add it together, you get an overall mu, and the mu is not zero. So as a result, water is polar. Okay. The mu is actually 1.85 in a unit called the Debye unit. You don't need to worry about it at this point, but that's what it is. Uh, if uh, you look at something like CF3H, okay, uh, again, you can see here that the C and the F, you know, has this relationship. The F is more electronegative, so then there's a bond vector this way, bond vector this way, bond vector that way. The H and the C are, you know, it's it's pretty much a nonpolar bond, so really that part of it we don't care. It's just these three. But when you add them together, you don't get a zero mu. So as a result, this molecule is also polar. Um, what about CF4? If, what about if you take that H and replace it with a fluorine? Now, all of a sudden, you get another vector going up that way. So you get one vector, two vectors, three vectors, four vectors. And when you add them all together, it turns out that all of these vectors cancel each other out. And your mu is actually zero. So if your mu is zero, that means this molecule is nonpolar okay so you can again calculate mu if you know how to add vectors but in this class you're not expected to know how to add vectors so what I'm gonna do is give you some simple rules that you can use to help you predict uh, polarity okay
molecular polarity in this case. Okay, so the first uh, rule is fairly straightforward. It says that if you have molecules where there is no lone pair at all around the central atom, and all the terminal atoms are exactly the same, identical, then that molecule is nonpolar. So an example of this type of molecule is the one that we just talked about, which is CF4. CF4, as you can see here, there's no lone pair around C, the central atom. All the terminal atoms are all fluorine, so they're all identical. So this molecule is nonpolar. If you add the vectors, you'll get a mu of zero. Second rule. If you have the square planar or the linear shape, okay, either one of those things uh, from your Vesper prediction, and you have, a, again, identical terminal atoms, these molecules are going to be nonpolar as well. Okay, and we'll do a couple of examples to, to show you, uh, you know, this, this type of situations. And lastly, if it's not either one of these two, then there's going to be polar. That's all we're going to use in this class right now. Again, because the fact that you can't really add vectors, so we have to kind of resort to some of these simpler rules to predict polarity.